Right, for this video we're going to be drawing an, an elephant calf and to draw our elephant calf we're going to just start with a nice big circle as the head. Now before you draw the circle keep in mind we need to add two quite big ears because elephants have really big ears so don't draw a gigantic circle and then you don't have space for the ears. Take up about the middle third of your page. You can take up a little more than the th a third but try not to do too much more otherwise we will run out of space. And I'm doing this just over halfway up my page. Okay, so I have my circle taking up my middle third. If you're not confident to draw a circle, you could trace around a small bowl or even use a compass. Right, and now we're going to add the ears. Now, when an elephant's really angry, they'll fill up their ears out straight, and that's usually how people draw elephants with these great big ears sticking out. But if they're happy and relaxed, they usually have them just down. So we're going to make a happy elephant calf. <laughs> and I'm just going to draw like a curved C shape. So from the top of the head, I'm just drawing a C shape coming down on either side. Make these two C shapes about the same size. It's more, yeah, a curved line. So it's a flat C, it's not a real curved C. And then from the bottom here, I want you to draw a line going in. And as you go, get closer to the elephant's head, make these two lines further apart. Okay, and then from this side, drawing two lines, and as they get towards the head, I'm moving my line further apart. Okay, before we draw the rest of the ears, we're just going to draw the elephant's body in. And for the body, we're just going to draw two simple lines coming down. I'm giving mine a bit of a curve, so kind of an S shape. So it's a bit skinnier at the top, and it gets wider as it goes out. And now I'm going to join the bottom of the ear to the body and I'm going to use an S shape for that. So it's almost like I'm drawing a lying down S. On this side you're also going to draw a curving line coming in. Mine's, this is not quite an S though, it's more like a wavy M. So it comes up, goes in, comes up, goes in. Okay, and on these folds you can just draw a line going in. So here's a fold and here's a fold. Right, now the trickiest part to, to get right is the trunk. And this is also going to be an S shape. So start in the bottom part of the, the mouth, about a centimeter up from the bottom of the head on the left hand side. You're going to start with a trunk and draw an S shape again. So a nice curving line. You can see it's not a, a perfect S, but maybe an upside down question mark is a better description of the line. For the other side of the trunk, I'm going to start at the bottom. And similar to these lines here, we're going to start close to that line. Just copy it. And as we get closer to the head, let this, the gap between the two lines get wider. Until it reaches the head and then at the end of this trunk we're just going to draw a skinny oval shape joining the trunk together okay I'm going to erase the bottom part of the head here because the trunk will be covering that now the eyes are going to go almost in line with where these two ears ended so on this line here, where the inside part of the ear ends, we want our eyes on this line. And for distance apart, use the trunk. So that however wide you made the top of your trunk, try and make your ears that wide apart. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of where about on the page we need to draw the eyes. Okay, now I said this line here, I'm just going to lightly draw a line across there, joining those two together so that I have a marker. And Again, I'm going to draw very light lines coming up from the trunk. So that also gives me a marker of where to start my eyes. 
I'm drawing them very lightly because I don't want to see them at the end. Okay, and this is going to be the line for the top of the eye. So the eyes are not going to be exactly on that line. That will be the marker for the top of them. Okay, now that I've done this, I've realized that my trunk is not quite centered. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Okay, try and start with two circles that are similar sizes. So you might even want to draw a line underneath to make sure that they come down to a similar spot. And then we can add the curves to them. So this is a curving line starting from where the trunk line is. Curving up to the ear line and then going down and flicking out away from the circle. And then the bottom line can just mirror that line. Okay, remember not to press too hard, press light until it's right. Right, once you're happy, you can erase these lines. We don't want them to interfere with the shading later on. So, any lines that you drew to help you draw the eyes. Get rid of them now. Okay, and then you also just want a little oval of light in each of the eyes. And later when we do the colouring with pastel, we'll add some eyelashes. Elephants have lovely long eyelashes, so we want to make sure that we add those in. Okay, we're ready to start with our shading now. To shade the elephant, we're going to use very similar colours to the colours that we used for a hippo. So I'm going to be using my pale orange. I'm also going to use a little bit of pink for this elephant. And then my gray and black. Okay, again, like all of these pictures, we're going to start with our lightest color. And this color is going to go in the ears. I'm going to just press really lightly with it. Again, I'm coloring a little bit harder from the inside edge of the ear and lighter as I get out. And then before I um, blend this, I'm just going to add a little bit of pink to it. The pink doesn't blend as easily as the pale orange does, so I'm just adding a little bit of the pink. To blend this, we're just going to start from the top corner and pull our finger down with a nice clean finger. All the way down to the bottom of the ear. And it will fade down to almost white by the time it gets to the bottom of the ear. Right, what we're going to do next is use our grey. And we're just going to kind of outline the elephant. Do some light colouring. Underneath the face. The trunk is going to make a little bit of a shadow on the elephant. So you can draw a bit, of, a bit more of a line there. Right, so I'm going to go along the top of the ear here and the outside edge of the face. Each side of the trunk. a nice clean finger. I just blend these colors. Over the trunk, if you can make your finger curve up, it will make the trunk look a bit more rounded. This will show up more when we do a bit of darker shading. 
If you do happen to make a mistake and rub with a dirty finger or a finger that has a different pastel color on it, you can sometimes erase it with your eraser if it's really light. So if you have made a mistake, give it a try, see if that helps it. Okay, we're going to add our black now. Um, so similar to the hippo, we're going to just press lightly with the black. Uh, when we rub lightly with the black, it's going to make a darker shade of grey. So I'm not pressing too hard with the black. I'm also just going to do a nice light line along the bottom of the ear here. Alright, let's blend this in. So you sometimes find with the black you can just pull your finger over it and it blends. Sometimes you need to move your finger in a more circular motion and pull it in to get it to blend. Okay, over the trunk I'm using, giving my finger a bit of a curve. Okay, and from the bottom of each ear, just draw a line over that with your finger. Blend that colour in a little. We drew um, two folds in the ears, so you can also just push lightly with that. With your black and go over that. Right, so now we can do some slightly darker black outlines on our elephant. You can colour in the edge of the elephant's trunk. I'm going to do one or two curved lines. Outline the ears, top of the head. Then finally we're going to colour in the elephant's eyes. If you find that the centre of the elephant's face is looking very white, you could just rub your finger over it um, with some of the black that you have and it will make it a nice light grey colour. You also might need to darken the bottom of the face a little bit. There'll be some shadow here where the trunk is over the bottom part of the face. So if your face is just looking like one big blob and you want to add a bit more definition to it, those are two ways to do that. Right, and then we can go over our eye. Nice clean line for this. Press really hard when you colour in. Okay. You can add that little line at the bottom. And definitely a few eyelashes for an elephant. I'm feeling like my face needs a little more shading. I'm just going to add a bit more dark on each side of the trunk here. Shade it in.
Right, for this little elephant, I'm going to give her a protea in her ear. Uh, the protea is the national flower of South Africa. So I thought that would be a nice one for an African elephant. And to start it, just um, move your pencil a bit up from the page, probably halfway between the top of the head and the edge of your page. You're just going to draw a V shape and this V should have curved edges. Then from the edge of her ear going up we're going to draw another V in the opposite direction. That's also going to have some curved edges. Okay and now this bottom V we're going to join the two points of the bottom V using a C shape. join it going behind this V. So it almost looks like a bowl that's got an upside down triangle in it. Okay, that's going to give us the shape of our protea. And then we're going to just have two oval leaves coming out from each end. Right. Um, for the center of this protea, you can color it in the pale orange color that we used on the elephant's ear. We're also going to use in the center of the protea. So I'm coloring that in. Um, and then to color the outside leaves, we're going to be using a red and a pink. And what we're going to do with, is start with the red. And from the bottom, I want you to draw a diamond shape in that bottom corner of the triangle. And then continue drawing diamond shapes like little scales coming up. And as you get higher up, they can become more like a triangular shape. They can get skinnier and longer. You can have a few of them on the other side. Okay, so you've drawn the outline with your red and now you can go and color it in with the pink. So try and color in each scale that you drew with the pink and color over the red line a little bit and then the pink will pull the red in and then the two colors should melt together and create a lovely protea color. to color in the leaves. So I'll start with my deep green first, give the leaf an outline and a line down the middle. And then color over it with my pale green. and then we're just going to finish it off with a black pastel. Start with the leaves, so we do a line down the middle, a little outline in a broken line, so don't draw a thick solid line outlining the leaves, just do a broken line. In the center of the protea, we're going to draw some really thin little lines going out. So on the left hand side, they're all angled outwards and on the right hand side they're angled outwards in the opposite direction. I'm going to outline this center of it. Now again we don't want to sit and outline each little petal else the flower is just going to end up looking black. So just pick a few lines and spots and as long as the outline, the outside edge gets an outline 
and a few of the petals on the inside get a back line on them. That should look good. And there's our baby elephant, all done.